Hello and welcome to Beer Tier, the German engineer explains oxygen not included. Today we are back with episode number two of our automation and sensor series and we are taking a look at a few different builds. For example, we have a version of the Terminator as well as a Critter Killer. So let's just jump right into it and see how that works out for us. And here we are with our first build. So let's take a look. It is extremely simple and it should help you out drastically as soon as you reach space. This here is a very simple setup with which we can pump carbon dioxide and any other gas for that matter straight out into space. And there are two ways that we can build it. So let's pause it real quick and let's take a look. Our overlay of course needs to be turned on and then in our automation overlay we can see that we have a gas element sensor here on the right, then a knot gate and then we have a gas pump. This gas pump here goes into a pipe and the pipe goes all the way into space we can take a look at that in a second but for right now let's take a look at the gas element sensor right here we can either use a gas element sensor or when we go into automation we can also use a atmos sensor that is fully up to you both work so we're going to take a look at both the just the bottom one the atmos sensor is not going to be hooked up to anything right now so the gas element sensor here says sense a green signal when the selected gas is detected on the sensor's tile remember a green signal so we set it to oxygen as soon as our base is coming down and we take a look into our F4 overlay, that's what usually what it looks like at the very bottom. You have carbon dioxide all the way on the bottom and then, for example, oxygen and maybe some natural gas and some chlorine above it. But as soon as our oxygen goes down because we pump out all the carbon dioxide, as soon as we detect the oxygen, we don't want to pump out any more because our valuable oxygen should stay where it is and that is in our base. So this here sends out a green signal, which is why we need a NOT gate. The NOT gate right here reverts the signal, so as long as it detects anything other than oxygen it sends a red signal but that means our gas pump should run therefore it needs a green signal and therefore we need a not gate and as soon as we do have oxygen right here we are sending a green signal which will turn our pump on of course we don't want that so we need to reverse it once again and need to send a red signal and with our atmo sensor right here we can save ourselves the not gate because we can just say whatever we want here for example we want to send a green signal as long as we are above 500 grams and as soon as our pressure down here goes below 500 500 grams, we will send a red signal and our pump will turn off. Those are viable ways of how to build this. Let's turn it back on. Let's take a look in our F7 overlay. We can see our gas goes over to here and then we are going straight up all the way into space and that should be right around here. That's it, right here. That is where it ends. So let's turn up the speed just for a second so we can actually see what it looks like when our gas arrives and it gets actually vented out into space. And here is our first piece of gas arriving, our first piece of carbon dioxide to be precise. And when we look in F4, it comes out and it immediately disappears into nothing. And that's exactly what that should look like. So let's move on to the next build. And right here on the bottom, I want to show you the auto sweeper and the auto sweeper is very useful. And I want to show you three different functions of the auto sweeper. So let's get right started with it. First of all, this build right here, we have the auto sweeper just hooked up to power. The auto sweeper needs 120 watts and when we click on it, we can see the outline. This is a mod that you will have to install. Without the mod, you will not be able to see this. So what do we have here? We have two storage bins. The right one is set up for consumable or coal and right beside it, I have some rust and the left one is set up to consumable or rust and I have some coal right beside it. So what I can do is I can go into the, my G mode and I can just deconstruct construct all of this you're better to say dig it up not deconstruct it but if i run the game our auto sweeper will start sweeping the material over and i just want to show that it doesn't matter where it is in this area right here if my coal is all the way on the left and i want to put into the right storage and vice versa that works just fine and that's exactly what our sweeper is going to do. He's grabbing the coal from the left and putting it over into the storage bin. And as soon as he's done with that, he's going to grab that rust right here and putting it into the left one. It's very, very simple. We can pick up stuff from the floor or anywhere else for a matter and put it into a storage bin. So that is function number one. Right here, I have the exact same setup on the top in an auto sweeper and a depth generator, but I have two storage bins here and the storage bins are exactly identical. They have the exact same max value of 1,600, the exact same consumable ore in it, which is coal, and we have it set to a priority of number five. So what if I, let's say, I want to put 2,000 kilograms into my right one, but in the left one, I want to stay at a maximum of 1,600. But for right now, it is more important that the right one is filled than the left one. How would I do that? Well, it's pretty simple. 
because our auto sweeper here obeys priorities. If I put the right one here to a number six priority, we are grabbing it out of the left and putting it into the right, just like that. And even though my max setting on the left one is set lower than on the right, if I set the priority higher, now we're taking it out of the right and putting it into the left. So we can also move stuff back and forth between storage bins however we want to, based on priority. That can come pretty handy every once in a while, especially when you have mixed stuff in storage bins, but maybe don't want all of it in there. Doesn't really happen too often, but I just want to throw it out there. It is an option that is available to you. So let's look at the third and last one. And right here we have a simple example build of what I personally would consider the most important function of the auto sweeper and that is to fill up buildings like the coal generator. So here I have storage bins with coal in it, just a random amount, 5 tons in the left one and 4.4 tons in the right one. I put some batteries in and we can see all I did is hook it up because we need a power consumer for our coal generator. The coal generator is currently disabled and as soon as I enable it, our auto sweeper will get at it. It will grab the coal out of the storage bin, he can also do it from the floor, it does not make a difference as long as it has access to it just like this and as soon as i turn it on let's take a look at it now our auto sweeper comes around picks up the coal puts it in there it will turn on and it will fill our batteries and it will do that fully automatic all our dupes have to do in this particular scenario is to fill up the storage bins and they do not have to take care of the coal generator this is a great way to ensure that you will never run out of power as long as you supply enough coals to your storage bins and that is usually the smaller issue that is just how it usually works. Of course, you can also automate filling your storage bins through certain ways in the shipping area right here, but we will talk about it in a different episode. For right now, all you need to know is the auto sweeper is capable of taking stuff from a storage bin or the floor and put it into buildings like the coal generator. So let's move on to the next build. And right here we have the next one, which is what I like to call the fridge door. Of course, you can use it for many other things, but I will show you what the application is all about. First of all, in our F3 overlay, what have I done here? On the left side, I have oxygen, which is at somewhere around 80 degrees, plus minus a couple degrees, and our door is at 87 degrees. So is the weight plate beneath it. All the automation underneath, we will take a look in a second. On the right side, I have polluted oxygen, and the polluted oxygen is somewhere in the negative 20, some additional area, and so is our door at negative 27.9 degrees Celsius. And in the middle I have a mechanized airlock as well that is open at 26.6 degrees and that is the exact idea of this build here. It allows a tiny tiny little bit of airflow whenever a dew passes through but the heat exchange is extremely low. We will see that here as soon as we spawn in a dupe but first let's take a look what the automation overlay actually looks like. And this is what we have here. It's a simple AND gate connected to two weight plates. So we have a weight plate right underneath the left door hooked up to input B on the left side of the AND gate and another white plate on the right side of our system. And it is hooked up to input A on the right side of our AND gate. And if both of those are made, we give a green signal here to the middle, which opens up this door. Which means as soon as this door here opens, one of those two goes away and this door here tries to close. And why that is important, we will see here in a very, very quick second. So let's spawn in a duplicate. Just somewhere, it doesn't really matter how about we start on the left side here here we have Camille and Camille will now move to the right at least we will tell her to do that and we will see exactly what that looks like we will look at it twice once with temperature and once with the actual gas so let's start with the temperature with F3 remember 87 on the left and negative 27.9 degrees on the right so let's let her walk through there she walks through the door closes and then opens back up and we can see we have moved a little bit of temperature around this here will equalize relatively quickly and as soon as that has happened because obviously we cooled this here down drastically right you gotta keep that in mind that we cooled this here down immensely before we actually started this let's send her through it again and see the diminished return on our investment right here so once again she's moving through here the gas is going in there the door closes it opens and now it's at 8.8 .8 degrees and at 52.4 degrees so every time we send her through it again it will get less and less and less until it normalizes that is absolutely normal so don't worry about it usually you don't see it that badly also the general idea is that on the right for example you have an anti-entropy thermal nullifier which is constantly cooling this area so that is one thing or on the left side you have something extremely hot like a volcano of some sort that is constantly heating things up so this here would then slowly but steadily equalize 
Obviously, right now we just have gas, so we are actually transferring the heat slowly but steadily back and forth. But what we also need to keep in mind is that this here is not airtight at all. We have carbon dioxide right here and we have oxygen right here. The carbon dioxide is, of course, from Camille from breathing out. But while moving through here, three tiles of oxygen have moved from the left to the right. So it is not airtight. That is highly important to know. Also, this here is not made for high throughput, which is why I personally use it for my fridges. It works very well for that. And that's what I would recommend it. You want to build a walk-in fridge? That is the perfect solution for you. Let's move on to the next one. And here we have our next build and that is a liquid terminator we have to start in the middle of the night just because that's how i usually set them up and i want to show you how i do it so let's jump into it first of all let's take a look what we have here we have a little bit of power and we have powered our mechanized airlock on the bottom we have powered our liquid shut off and of course the liquid pump here on the top even though i don't consider this part of the build because wherever your water is coming from now that is up to you but let's take a look in our overlay for automation we have two cycle sensors right here one on the top that is hooked up to the liquid shutoff and one on the bottom that is hooked up to our mechanized airlock right here so let's see how they're set up and what they're doing let's start on the top this one right here has an activation time of 0.5 percent which means half a percent into the start of a new cycle we turn this one here on and we then turn it on for a total of 33 percent which means from 0.5 percent to 33.5 percent into a cycle this here is turned on and is turned to green which allows liquid to flow as we can see right here so the liquid comes from the top flows into here and then flows into our liquid reservoir but then most importantly down here on the bottom this cycle sensor here is set up with an activation time of zero which means it turns on half a percent before this one here on the top turns on and it is on for a total of 66 percent which happens to be exactly double of what this one here on the top is which also means we have a total of 34 percent left over which is one percent more than what the top here is and all of this is very important so let's watch it in action so we can understand it a little bit easier so let's turn all the overlays off except the f6 overlay so we can see what's going on we're gonna run it and here in about a second or so this here should turn on there we go there it is and now we are pumping our water into our liquid reservoir and the nice thing is you can see right here we have a little bit of an error right here missing tile that's right because when a mechanized airlock is open it means there is no more floor which also means that the liquid reservoir right here it has an input and an output the output is now completely blocked but the input is not so we are cheesing the game just a tiny little bit that's what we are basically doing here we are filling water in here a lot of water i believe almost two tons per cycle with a lot of germs in it of course the room is filled with chlorine so as soon as this cycle here is over or a bit better to set a filling cycle is over we have the water just sitting here and the germs get deleted so let's fast forward up until the point where we are just sitting here and we can see the germs die and here we have it it has now turned off and at 33.5 percent through our cycle we have 1972 kilograms in here and we can see how the germs are dying drastically so let's move fast forward up until the point where we can see that the germs are completely gone and then we will see the safety margin that we still have on our timer here on the bottom and the very last few germs are dying as I'm speaking. We have about five left and we are down to zero right now. So I pause the game. And right here we can now see the safety margin that we still have left over, which means even though we have about one million germs up there, even if it is much, much more than that, we have more than enough margin left over to kill them all. And that is why it is set up so long. But let's move forward up until we start emptying it out and we will see that it works perfectly as it is supposed to work. And right here it is about to switch and right now it's switching and in our f6 overlay now we can see that now that the door is closed that our water is flowing and we are just emptying it into our reservoir over here very nice clean water in our germ overlay we can see not a single germ has made it out of there alive wonderful that gives us as i said roughly 2000 kilograms of water per cycle which is a pretty decent amount in my opinion so let's move on to our next and last build for this episode 
And right here we have it. It is a critter killer. Yes, we are going to drone a bunch of critters. And you can see we have all sorts of stuff in here. We have a Pip. We have a Plug Slug. We have a Sweetle. We have a Glossy Draco. A Hatch. All sorts of stuff is running around in here. And to the best of my knowledge, it should be about eight of them. So let's see what the automation here actually looks like. In our automation overlay, we have a Critter Sensor. And the Critter Sensor is set to above seven, just because we happen to have eight. You can literally set this to whatever you want to drown one every time go ahead you want to drown 20 be my guest does not matter it doesn't make a difference however many you want but what is important we have a buffer gate first so we go from our critter sensor to a buffer gate with a 20 second set time right here then we go into a not gate and then the not gate is hooked up to two more buffer gates in this specific order so let's take a closer look here we're coming out of our not gate and then into a buffer gate to the very top door set up to six seconds then we have another buffer gate that is hooked up to the second door from the top to the bottom with a delay of three seconds right here and then the bottom one we don't need a delay at all so we don't have an extra buffer gate we just hook it up directly and why that is we will see here in a second first of all let me spawn in a dupe give that dupe the appropriate skills and then we will wrangle all those critters and put them into our critter killer chamber let's go to spawner grab a dupe put him in here skills it is Bert. Bert gets improved farming, critter wrenching, all sorts of stuff. We're just going to give him all sorts of nonsense to speed up the entire thing here. A tiny little bit of two athletics, so he moves a little bit faster. And there we go. All we need to do now is say wrangle with a number nine priority. Not that it matters because he has literally nothing else to do, but we're going to do it anyway. And let's see, Bert's coming and Bert's wrangling and should be dropping him off in here. I just set it to everything everything well except slicksters for some reason i said everything no matter what it is should go into here so let's let bird do his job and right now bird is picking up the last critter which is the plug slug right here and he is coming up and as soon as he puts him in our sensor will activate and now we can watch what's happening in our f2 overlay we can see we are giving out the green signal it comes through it becomes a red signal and it goes into our two buffer gates but the bottom door is going to close immediately the bottom door is closing just like this and our water is rising and that is why we have those buffer gates so we don't close them all at once if we try to close them all at once the water will not move upwards it will actually get deleted yeah it has nowhere to go because they close all at once and therefore it gets deleted which is why we have to do it one by one by one so now we move it up and as soon as the last one is closed all of those critters are now underwater and all of them are drowning we can see it right here unreachable gloom drowning yeah they're all pretty unhappy Bert, could you move out of the way for a second thank you sir i appreciate it what is important is that these critters here don't all drown at the same time. And that is why we have this gate right here. If the first one drowns, then this one here give out a red signal and the others will not drown. Therefore, we have a 20 second delay to opening our doors again. So let's watch that happening in real time. And the first critters have died. And we can now see in our overlay once again. Yes, the timer is going off. But the other critters have now died as well. And our doors are opening. Our water falls back down. And all we have left over is our meat. And now in a normal game, a dupe like Bert would come by, pick up the meat and put it into our fridge. And just like that, we got a nice 13 kilograms worth of meat. Isn't that something? By killing eight critters, just like that, fully automatic, all we have to do is put them in here and take the meat back out. No other dupe labor is involved. I think this is a pretty cool system, especially because it requires no power whatsoever. Let's take a look. None of those doors you're hooked up to power. There is no power involved at all and all we are doing is we are filling this here up with water once and then we are going to reuse the same water over and over and over again it never needs to be topped up no maintenance required at all but that is all i have for you today if you enjoy the content please subscribe to the channel leave a like on the video and comment down below you know it i always love to hear from you and as always you can find the save file down below in the description and with that i say thank you and peace